All right, so you found a manga you like, but there's no updates. So you're like, what do I do? You wanna know what I did? I just started reading. It didn't matter what it was, I'd read literal scum. It was disrespectful some of the shit I'd make myself read, like, crap, I'm a teacher at a black gal school. Anyway, I'll just repeat the process of finding a manga I really like, getting obsessed with it, and then coping by finding more and more manga to fill the time between updates. Though yeah, I'm like 200 manga deep this year. What I'm getting at is, out of 200, only about 50 of those aren't filler. Today I'm going to share 10 of those manga that I can't get enough of. So obviously not every manga is going to be for you, and I'm mostly going to be informative today, so down below I have a list of every manga that I'll be talking about. There will be a little star if I think you should really give it a read. I gotta recommend though, at least watch the summary for each manga because I'm only putting down stories that I really enjoy. So maybe you will too. By far the most hype cacophony of action and pure manliness on this list is none other than Shumatsu no Walker. I don't know how to pronounce that. Anyway, in this world, gods of every kind exist in the same universe. There's four arms, Zeus, Odin, and even some biblical figures. A large council of them are left to decide the fate of humanity. Do we let humanity survive and continue letting them trash Earth, or do we kill them all? Then, someone suggests that there be a series of 1v1 battles between the gods and prominent members of human history. It's all badass from there. The story is just battle after battle after battle and pure fun to read. All the gods and their backstories have been reimagined, including giving them awesome abilities. As you can imagine, the same can be said for the humans. Don't expect any historical accuracy. A few of the portrayals are just hilarious, but honestly, it really fits the theme of the manga. It's an incredibly over-the-top and ridiculous read. So let me talk about the action. Is good. Each fight is masterfully paced for the duration of a couple chapters apiece. The art during each sequence is super nice and well illustrates what's happening during each scene. It's hard to get confused unlike some action and manga and it's just really nice to look at. When I was reading, at one point I could feel my heart start beating. It made me feel stinky as fuck, yes, but it's also the product of these really well done and exciting fights. They somehow managed to subvert my expectations every time. Yeah, there's some super cliche moments that maybe outright sigh, but it's overshadowed by the good stuff. Like how absolutely badass all the characters are. So far there hasn't been a lame character and in the newest chapters, I've even found myself rooting for one of the gods. This makes me really hyped for the rest of the cast that they have planned out. Like when I saw Sasaki Kojiro, aka the badass deaf guy from Vagabond, ooh, I was ready. Anyways, if you're not absolutely hooked by chapter 4, this ain't for you, so at least give it a trial run. Also, doesn't Thor look like Loki from that one manga I was talking about? Moving on. Chagon! I'm not trying to Logan Paul you, that's actually the title. I believe I actually found out about it because one of the guys involved worked on I Am A Hero in Nagasaki. Jagon is about a guy with a job he hates, in a relationship he doesn't want, forced to put on a fake smile every day. Out of nowhere, alien frogs rain from the sky, infecting people and causing them to turn into monsters that reflect the subconscious desires of whoever they target. They are called fractured humans. Some people, like our main character, become incomplete fractured humans, allowing them to use their powers within certain limits and not lose control of themselves, most of the time. Anyway, these fractured humans' goals are to kill every existing frog and then kill themselves when all the frogs are dead because a talking bird told them to. Basically, all you need to know is a lot of people are infected, some people turn crazy, others don't, and some people are even treated like superheroes. It's jam-packed with fresh powers and impressive character design. You might like it for the action, which there is a ton of, and it's all pretty as heck. I can't show you or YouTube will nuke my paycheck. I personally really like the main guy's powers because I'm 7 years old and like thinking about transformations. You may also like it for the psychological aspect. You get to watch how normal ass people react to suddenly having superpowers, or maybe even how normal people respond to having their family slaughtered in front of them. Yeah, it gets really dark at times. The manga is extremely morbid, like all the time, which I can see turning off a lot of people. But it's surprisingly playful and fun. And the main character actually has S word. So, it's already got a lot more going for it than most stuff. I'd say go a solid six to seven chapters, and if it's too much for you, then, you know. I will say if you were a fan of I Am A Hero, I know it's not the same author, but you should definitely run this one up. There's a Parasite reference. The Fable is about a legendary hitman given the title, Fable. After killing tons of people, the head of his organization orders him and his getaway driver to live an ordinary life for a year to get rid of some of the heat, under the condition that if either of them kill anyone, they'll be killed in exchange, meaning our main character Sato has to lay low and play it cool, even when the underworld seems to keep finding a way into his life. This is a manga that made me keep saying one more chapter for about two hours. Reason being, the whole story is extremely unconventional and extremely fun. The main character is a genius killing machine that can kill anyone in less than six seconds, but beyond that, he's really just a goofy guy who's never had a chance to live a life outside of a assassinating people. It sets up this duality where instead of his job being Sato's identity, behind that mask he's a real guy who acts nothing like how you'd expect. I just found myself drawn to his character and how well it was written, and I think you will too. All the other characters were staggeringly realistic themselves. The dialogue, although it's being translated from another language and culture, feels extremely authentic. This made me want to learn more about every character and their motivations and what their backstories were. Story-wise, I can totally see how the premise sounds a bit boring, but in practice, the fable manages to pull it off in a variety of ways. For example, Sato pretends to be a bumbling dumbass 
class to avoid getting in trouble. It pisses me off 90% of the time when stories try this. I can't stand the whole pacifism thing and I hate the I must hold back type of thing with a few exceptions. But even when Sato is pretending to get curb stomped, he somehow makes it badass. And he does whip some serious ass if he has to. Sato really makes you want to see the kind of crazy stunts he can pull and where he'll develop in the future. On top of that, when it wants to be, the story is genuinely funny as hell. The last thing I want to talk about is the art. Rather than drawing the characters that look like anime characters, they look like people. Even the main character literally almost has the same face as this guy I know, except with the hair of Boomhauer. Then there's the side characters who all have a ton of effort put into them and the body language. God damn, the body language is on point. Point. It really made the manga feel like I was watching a movie. One of these comments gave an explanation as to why they're drawn so lifelike, but I'm not educated enough to make a comment on that. Anyways, this on top of well-written characters and dialogue makes for an unbelievably believable <laughs> story that's made me laugh, get intrigued, and whatever it is when you admire how badass a character is. Check out at least the first three chapters regardless of what your tastes are, I think a ton of you guys will like it. In the same vein of The Fable, another manga that takes place in a realistic yet highly entertaining world is My Home Hero. An ordinary businessman is going on a long way to date with his daughter. During dinner, he notices something's wrong, and after some interrogation, he spots a bruise. After finishing up, he goes to the dude who might have hit his daughter, so he gets suspicious and goes to her apartment. While investigating, the boyfriend pops into the apartment, dad has to hide and overhears the boyfriend might end up killing his daughter. Long story short, the dad fucks him up and has to hide the body. It becomes this cat and mouse game of hiding his crime from the Yakuza, his daughter, and the police through a ton of really well thought out ways. Reason being, the main character Tetsuo is an aspiring mystery novel writer. There's an absolute myriad of reasons you might like this manga, so I'm just gonna list them off. The main character is what I want in a mystery. He's not too stupid for sure, and he's not some ultra mega genius like the average Ava fan. You clearly see his thought process through every action, and it's honestly a huge ego boost when both you and the main character are thinking, let's check for wires, there's probably trackers in the phones. Then, by using the knowledge from writing novels, you get all these sick tips and tricks for disposing bodies that I would have never thought of. There's also the aspect of seeing what a completely normal or average guy can become when he's pushed to the absolute limit. He's constantly being challenged and put on the spot. I love seeing what he comes up with and really want to see him become more and more cool as the series carries on. Eventually, you might even find yourself getting attached to some of the antagonists. Finally, the thriller aspect of the story. You never know for sure if a plan is going to go perfectly the first time, and whatever problems arise make perfect sense. My Home Hero is full of suspense, satisfying moments, and a great choice in both main and support characters. I highly recommend you give this one a shot. It's another story that I want to save up chapters for, but can't help but read every time it comes out. I believe the Raws are way ahead of the current chapter, so you can expect the chapters to update at a pretty decent pace. Okay, to brighten up the mood, I have a pretty pleasant isekai called So I'm a Spider, So What? If you've seen my isekai video, you know a big problem I have with a lot of isekai is how the main characters generally become overpowered really quick and basically steamroll enemies throughout the entirety of the series, meaning there's no room for growth. Slime Boy compensated for this by making the main source of progression be the development of a kingdom. This one, on the other hand, skips the middleman and just has the main character grind. In man is it s uh, gratifying? The high school girl's in class, blah blah blah, she wakes up in another world as a spider and quickly realizes the nature of this world. Now, the girl was originally a hikikomori, so she's privy to a lot of game stuff and learns she can invest in various skill trees. The last thing she realizes is that she's weak as fuck. Instead of having some cheat ability that would let her beat everything in sight instantly, she gradually rises from the very bottom to the top like an actual game. From feeling triumph at beating the weakest mobs available to the next level and so on. She's always leveling up and developing new skills, but it never gets stale. Does she get overpowered? Hell no. She gets her ass handed to her again and again and again. Watching her overcome these obstacles is so sad as fuck, I always use that word, and genuinely addicting. I love that since her build is so weak, she never just wins because, oh, I spawned in able to absorb the ability of anything. It's because she's smarter than whatever she's fighting and actually spent time refining her abilities. Like 60 chapters in, she's still finding new bosses that are leagues above her, and I hope they continue that trend. I really believe I'm a spider, so what is an isekai going in just the right direction? It's like an actual game, not some GTA playthrough that you get sick of after an hour. So if you're sold, give it a shot. I'm just going to give you some extra information. If you're not interested, I recommend you skip ahead. They released a preview for the anime adaptation a couple years ago. Let's be real, it looks like complete shit. They gave the spider a nose, and the dragon looks like a goddamn fursona, but there was some really pretty pixel art. I love how that part looks. Anyway, I couldn't find out when or if the anime releases after like 5 minutes of searching, so it's up to you to find out if you care enough. Keeping up the trend of some lighthearted stuff, I have Spy Family. 
A famous spy in a presumably European nation is sent to investigate some guy. To make himself less suspicious, he's ordered to manufacture a wife and child for himself to infiltrate a prestigious school. While on this quest to adopt a child smart enough to get into the school, he comes across a psychic girl and a hitman for a wife. Thing is, none of them know their identities besides the psychic kid. This is a comedy and it does a damn good job. I got a couple chuckles and a hee hee here and there, quite a bit actually, which is saying something because I generally don't vibe with Japanese humor. Second, it's really cool seeing how the spy, psychic, and hitman use their abilities in everyday life and how they try to hide it. The fact that they're living under the same roof and need to conceal their identity sets up a ton of fun situations. Then you get to see some crazy badass moments on all sides, it's pretty nice. But I think the main thing, or one of the main things that keeps me reading is seeing how the bonds between each character develop. I know that's a real fairy tale argument, but I really do enjoy seeing this not family develop into a real family. Try it out. I usually stay away from stuff like this, but it surprised me by being a really fun and uplifting read that I genuinely enjoy. I actually started reading this from a comment I saw in my first manga video. Give it about two chapters, if you're not digging it, just drop it. Lip Lipnir is an action, sci-fi, romantic sign-in, and it's definitely earned the sign-in tag. A seemingly ordinary high school kid is revealed to have an ability to transform into a fursuit. I know that sounds pretty gay, but the fursuit pretty much buffs all his physical abilities. This is discovered after saving a girl from dying in a fire, which the girl later uses to blackmail him into finding her sister, whose parents were killed by a similar type of monster. So down the line they figure out that the girl is able to enter the fursuit to become even stronger, and that similar monster hybrids are gathering special coins that allow them to... If that sounds ridiculous and complicated, it sort of is, but not to an overwhelming degree. It basically evolves into sort of a battle royale where there's tons of different personalities, different characters, different abilities, all clashing and interacting. This makes for A, some really sick fight scenes, and B, some really interesting characters. Speaking of, I'll be the first to say that our main character is a little bitch, but the guy's showing some serious development, so I'm not tripping. Anyway, in case the action isn't your thing and you're not interested in the characters, another really good strength of this manga is the plot. There's a bit to unpack plot-wise, they're doing a really good job of sucking you in to read more. You can tell the author had the story mapped out before he started working on the manga. A huge element of what's got me reading is mystery. You have a ton of questions that slowly get answered the more you read, some of which are answered really quickly, others are still being hinted at. Please note that there's some really adult shit in this manga, tons of gore, limbs getting ripped off, so be prepared for that. I think you should test run this manga for about 4 chapters to get a good feel for it, I really liked it, so there. Alright, extra info. I was originally gonna say something similar to, I feel like this manga has a really high chance of becoming an anime. That's because it is. Crunchyroll released an article in like, May, and if you go to glipnear.com, not only can you see a glimpse of titty, <laughs> but they've also provided a link to a teaser. This one's gonna be slightly spoilery for the first two-ish chapters, so if you care about that kind of thing, just read it. It's pretty good. If you need some convincing, here's the rundown. A ship full of high schoolers on a field trip gets one-shotted and die. God comes over and tells them you can either choose to be isekai'd or reincarnated on Earth. If you choose to get isekai'd, God imbues you with good fortune and a special power. Everyone's name is called to walk up and receive their power, and some guy who looks like and has a similar name to our protagonist protagonist gets way more orbs than anybody else for some reason. Then our protagonist, who's in dead last, goes up to receive his orbs, and God's basically like, shit. So the dude gets forcefully sec-eyed and it's all fucked up from there. Everyone in this new world can use elemental magic but him, so after being tortured as a human guinea pig, they find out he can use death magic. Some more Tokyo Ghoul type stuff happens for like 10 years straight, you can imagine what happens when our main guy escapes. Anyway, without spoiling any more, he's reincarnated a third time as a baby and gets a well-deserved nerf. Unlike his first and second life, he's given a real chance with a good parent, so he's kind of caught between hanging on the hate and need for revenge that he's had for two lifetimes or to move past that. It's kind of everything you would expect in an isekai. You got a mill you got leveling systems, magic, you know. But I think it was really cool seeing a bit of a graphic twist in any Sekai. I feel more often than not the genre is commonly babyfied. You won't find that here. People are still catching arrows to the throat and all that good stuff. The powers are really cool. The kid can control spirits and dead things, so he's always finding really creative ways to use his powers. Overall, really nice. I've enjoyed this manga for a while and it's done a good job of not feeling generic. I mean, so far we're 13 chapters in and he hasn't even found an elf girl about to get... Besides that, this one sticks out and I can really feel an anime adaptation coming. This is another three chapter kind of deal. Change the world is about a social outcast. Hmm, where have I heard that one from? A guy who's pretty much fed up with his life is planning on killing himself, so he walks over to an abandoned building and ties a noose. He then finds a gun on the floor and is interrupted by a detective who assumes our MC is the guy he's chasing. They both instinctively shoot at each other at the exact same time, but instead of dying, our protagonist wakes up in the detective's body. So our guy experiences a brand new life where he's extremely attractive, well-respected, athletic, and also a serial killer. He has to figure out how to deal with the crimes and grudges that the previous owner of his body has made. This means hiding 
finding the bodies, playing with their balls, and fighting bad guys. The next layer is managing his new life as a detective, possibly solving crimes that he himself has committed and keeping up this facade in front of his co-workers. And then it gets even more twisted when the story pans over to what's happening to his original body, which now has an extremely charismatic serial killer running around inside of it. There's so much to like about this manga, including the main character. Since he's operating a new body with different neural connections than his own, he retains the instincts and physical strength of the serial killer leading to some crazy cool moments and posing the question, what happens if he stays in this body for too long? It's a really cool manga with a sick villain and a lot of stuff going on. I think a shit ton of you will enjoy it. It's currently 17 chapters deep and hasn't found a way to bore me yet, so give it about two chapters and you'll know if it's for you. Ubo Blot is not a berserk substitute, but holy shit do people like saying it is. Ubo Blot takes place in a Tolkien-like universe with magic spells and rituals, but slightly more advanced. You can imagine the rest. The main character is an elf-looking dude that has a vendetta against the seven heroes of his kingdom, going through great lengths and waves of enemies just to get a chance at killing them. The story is about our main character, who can make four swords sprout out of his arm, traveling the country to get revenge. There's a lot to digest, obviously, but once you understand why he's out for revenge and get the hang of how the world works, it becomes immensely more enjoyable. The character has a really interesting backstory, and I felt myself weirdly angry at the people he was trying to kill. Speaking of killing people, you can expect a lot of that. There's tons of badass shots with Quinzel slicing through enemies and using his powers. Now, the first three chapters can feel a bit slow, but once I relearned the story, I quickly found myself glad to be learning more about the lore. Honestly, I usually skip past text walls after a while, but not here. Is it similar to Berserk? I mean, aside from the horse, European setting, extremely adult themes, main character seeking revenge, the good guy being framed as the bad guy, and the black swordsman, I wouldn't necessarily compare the two. I will say if you like one, there's a pretty damn good chance you'll like the other. I recommend you check out Uber Slot if you're into the whole Tolkien thing and like darker stories with a ton of action. There are two things to note though. I couldn't find any high quality scans of the manga, which is a shame because you can tell it's really well drawn, especially the colored pages. Secondly, this manga is in desperate need of a scan team. It's been stuck at chapter 161 for a while now, but the actual manga is a bit ahead. But hey, at least it actually has a chance at being updated, unlike something else. So I was on YouTube and this video popped up in my recommendations. I couldn't watch it because I almost immediately got a spoiler, but moving on, the author of Berserk is, uh, starting a new series. <laughs> when he can't even finish his other f I haven't checked it out yet because I'm short on time, but I'll leave a little editing note if I think it's worth your time. It probably is. Just thought some of you guys might want to know. If you like this video, don't subscribe because I'm not a manga channel. I talk about anime, the inferior way to watch content, and I don't know if I'm sarcastic yet. See ya.